Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to our uh, Horizon, Weekly, Horizon Weekly Insider. I believe this one is number 15 or 14, but I, I'm pretty sure it's number 15. <laughs> so happy Thursday. Uh, please remember as usual that uh, this call is going to be recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to review later. And also, please remember to ask your questions for at the end of this session to have our Q&A um, session as well. So please, uh, let's start with the updates from the engineering department. Um, I don't see Luca, but I don't know if maybe Alberto, you would like to jump in. They are connecting in a few seconds. Yeah, I should uh, be connected now. Okay. Hello there. Can you hear us? Hi. Yeah. I, sorry, I had to some some issues on my side no worries well if you would like to start Luca, please go ahead oh sure so hello everybody uh Luca here together with um, some of uh, uh, our engineers in the milan office um this week uh, let me say we have been uh, working on many different areas very hard and uh, we will provide the more specific details in a minute But um, well, before that, let, before me that just, let me just let me just tell, me you, just that tell you that I, I hear some uh, echo. Go on, it's muted now. Okay. Um, I was uh, I was going to say that I was saying that uh, we had uh, many code review sessions with uh, different team members. Um, in particular, today we just finished a very good one uh, code review with uh, Alexander that was uh, specific uh, um, to review his part of the developments on epochs. While uh, earlier this week we also had a sync up with uh, Oleg about um, the upcoming uh, uh, tasks related to consensus, uh, another code, uh, code review session uh, with um, Alberto Sala on the main chain changes for side chains was done and, and so on. So for this week, the plan, let me say, was uh, to make as much progress as we could on all the open fronts that we have. Uh, for example, another item that I was forgetting now was represented by updating our sidechain test framework with a new feature that allows to bootstrap a sidechain into the existing mainchain network in an automatic way, uh, and so on. And, and we did that, and we did uh, a, a lot of good progress. So, uh, Alberto, I don't know if you would like to go uh, deeper with this, but also with uh, other topics. I know you have uh, also some news about the the deadlock issue, for for example. So feel free to, to go on. Yes, Luca, thank you. Uh, yes, um, so we um, reviewed, the, as you mentioned, the, the pull request from Alexander, and uh, uh, this uh, pull request was um, related to epochs, and uh, as we were discussing the previous weeks, this is uh, another important part of the of the development so um, so what this pull request uh, was containing so part of the um, development uh, uh, of uh, the function of the epochs and in particular the changes related to history and so and what does this mean uh, all the functionality that allows you for example to identify Uh, what is the epoch number uh, related to a specific uh, uh, sidechain block? And we uh, and we remember that uh, the epoch number, uh, uh, let me say, epochs are um, fought in terms of main chain block references included in, in sidechain blocks. So this led to some, uh, let me say changes in uh, and addition in uh, on the kind of information that we are uh, let me say uh, in storing in uh, in our history and uh, uh, we applied them and and uh, let me say the the, the, the development went uh, uh, quite well um, but okay now we are proceeding uh, uh, regarding epochs on uh, collection of uh, uh, withdrawal requests and uh, uh, processing them at the end of the epoch for creating the proper list of backwards transfers and, and certificate but this is uh, going to uh, be uh, finished probably uh, next week 
Okay. Um, regarding the deadlock, deadlock issue that you mentioned before, um, it seems that uh, we found the uh, the problem. And um, okay, so this seems to be uh, related to the fix for preventing an attacker to the det- to detect the ownership of a shielded address of a node. I mean, this was the fix previously implemented by Zcash, and then we uh, let me say uh, took from them. And uh, uh, in particular, um, the fix. Um, let me say, allowed to process wallet uh, transaction to be added in a wallet in a, in a separate thread to not give information to other nodes about if if the node was, let me say, busy processing that transaction. And this can be, uh, uh, this could be uh, caused by, um, for example, if, if the wallet owns the private key of the of, of that uh, transaction so um, the fix was moving uh, that processing uh, on another thread uh, but in such fix uh, was also changed the lock strategy in particular when processing uh, this transaction um, was not anymore uh, used the lock the main lock but was was uh, just uh, use the wallet lock. So this led to a situation where two concurrent threads can access the database and write data on it. And uh, uh, from what we saw, uh, there is a particular situation where this can lead to a, a deadlock. So uh, obviously, the, the most um, let me say obvious modification would be to uh, uh, re-enable. Um, the thread that the lock on the main uh, of the main lock, but uh, we are currently uh, understanding if these can uh, let me say uh, cause again uh, the possibility to detect if the address was belonging to you or not. So, um, so we have a um, um, uh, a couple of options uh, and that we are still evaluating, but. Uh, I mean, I think that we are um, quite near to the solution. Uh, and moreover, uh, we are also implementing some uh, test cases that w- will uh, um, allow us to uh, reproduce uh, the issue uh, in, uh, let me say, in an easy way. And, and so we will be able also to verify that we solved it um, consistently. Okay, um, other um, work was related to, um, as the previous uh, week, uh, we are continuing, uh, continuously working on the, on the paper, uh, and uh, uh, in particular to the extended model. Currently, we are uh, at, the, uh, at 37 pages, but uh, I mean, we are almost at the end, and so uh, I'm confident that uh, soon we are going to let me say, to finish it, and uh, it's almost everything from my side. Thank you. Thirty-seven pages and growing. Back to you, Angie. Thank you. That's great to hear. Okay, so next one would be uh, Chronic on the infrastructure side. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, in the last two days, we had uh, two issues which uh, required intervention from the infrastructure department. So we had. Um, one node failing on one of our explorers. And this was an intermittent failure, which was um, not that easy to identify. And essentially, the explorers are a load balance in the back end. And one of the um, nodes in the background was um, returning wrong data and needed to be reseeded. And this caused some pretty... um, Unfortunate interactions mm-hmm. for our light client wallet. So um, Sphere or Arison were showing the wrong balance and the next second they were showing the right balance. And in some circumstances, uh, you were unable to spend anything uh, with Sphere. Um, but this is fixed now and uh, we'll be putting um, some more checks in place that this doesn't happen in the future. And um, we also had an issue on two of our challenge nodes on the tracking server side of things, but we caught it pretty quickly and um, 
there were some challenges failing, but uh, Ellen has uh, excluded all of those exceptions and there was no impact on payments. And uh, on the next tracking server code release, uh, we've made good progress on the code review and are now moving on to uh, testing everything. And the, the biggest change is the rollup of, of payments from seven payments per node per week to a single payment, which um, will require some extensive testing. So we are currently looking at getting our production data into our testnet um staging environment and actually doing dry runs of the payments of past payments to make sure that everything works uh, as it's intended. And for the future, this will uh, certainly help with all of our light client wallets with batch withdrawals uh, because um, the, the sheer amount of payments that the, the tracking system causes is, is a headache for, for all of our uh, developers of our light wallets because it's, it's a huge amount of transactions that are being caused and it's computationally intensive to spend all of this. So uh, we are approaching it from, from multiple fronts. Um, first of all, reducing the number of transactions on the tracking system side and also um, increasing performance and batch withdrawal logic uh, in Sphere itself. Uh, in terms of when this will be ready, so um, testing will, will commence. Um, hopefully tomorrow, uh, if everything goes to plan. And um, we're, we're targeting really after the Thanksgiving weekend to deploy this. So this would be first week of December. Uh, and um, yeah, let's, let's look forward to testing and, and how, it, how it all works out. Or we are looking forward to testing and how it all works out. We, we don't foresee any, any huge problems here, but uh, we'd rather take our time and uh, make sure everything works as it's intended. And back to you, Angie. Thank you, Kranik. Alan, would you like to continue with the notes uh, system updates? Yeah, just one other um, item about the build that's going to be deployed. It's also going to include some rate limiting for the API calls, but we will be posting some information about that. Um, it probably won't be It'll be rolled out, but not enabled initially, but uh, there will be information coming out that will explain uh, what we expect to be limiting, what calls, and uh, what anybody who are using those calls can do to figure out um, any issues with it and what the rates are and how it's going to be implemented. So we can look for that in some sort of post in the next uh, week or two. Back to Thanks. you, Angie. Thank you. Next one is Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So great update, Kronik and Devman. So we'll start with the help desk update with this, uh, with Spencer. Spencer, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, numbers from the help desk are slightly above the average for the last month. We had 150 new tickets uh, in the last seven days. We currently have 80 open, eight waiting for support, 59 are waiting for the customer. And uh, that's, uh, we'll change the format a little bit on the help desk uh, report going forward. We'll give more detailed information about exactly what issues are coming across the help desk primarily. Uh, we would say there would be faucet related at the moment due, due to the popularity of the faucet is sort of overwhelming everything else at the moment. That's, that's the report for today. Thanks, Spencer. So our focus this week been the Sphere mobile testing. We also been uh, continuing working on the faucet, adding uh, new features on the admin backend. That's something that Martin been requesting. So so we can better follow our campaigns and make adjustments based on uh, hard data. And uh, we've been also working on some minor web dev tasks. And uh, this week we delivered uh, the code for the workshop project that we were working with Jonas. And that's everything for now. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Gustavo. Okay. Um, Vano, would you like to uh, give any updates? Hello, everyone. So my main focus has been communication with our partners regarding our latest branding update alongside Matter, which is going quite well. And um, many of them already updated uh, to our new new logo and our description. 
and we are also focusing uh, uh, on like checking this stuff and uh, going uh, alongside our partners who need some help there. Also, I'm working with a new service that will be launched very soon, and they will be providing reports about blockchain and crypto projects. Um, and they are uh, sourcing um, information, detailed information about us and our projects. Last but not least, uh, BD team is also focusing on adopting uh, new custodian services, institutional grade custodian services, as Rowan mentioned last week. And we are continuing to work in this direction. That's all from us. Thank you, Vano. Uh, Jonas, any updates on the HCAE project? Hey there. Uh, yeah, quick update. Um, as Gustavo mentioned, the uh, um, deliverables from our side for the workshop came out. Um, for the academy, um, we started a new attempt at getting some videos out. Linda put together a script for it. Uh, we jumped on a call with Marco. So um, in the first step, we are going to have Rolf record the audio for it. Um, once the audio is recorded, Linda, in the meantime, will uh, develop the graphics for the video. And once we have the voiceover, um, Marco is going to animate the um, graphics um, timed so that it matches um, Rob's reading time. And the first video is going to be a short one, uh, just short of two minutes. So that should be a good uh, practice for the next videos. Um, if you remember, we talked about videos a while ago, but then resources were kind of um, limited. So now that um, our design team has some more capacities for that, we're starting again to put some together. Um, for now, we will, we're will we working on a video for the Eli 5 section. Um, just to introduce, to introduce that um, entire section, later on, um, I would first do an introduction video for the beginner and advanced level and later on if um, we have the capacities to do so maybe one video per chapter so then basically one video could introduce two or three articles at a time um, just give a quick overview and um, if the user is still interested in knowing more than that he can get into the articles and um, Yes, that would be it for my side for now. Thank you, Jonas. Um, please remember to ask your questions um, during uh, this call. And now, next one is Jonathan with the marketing updates. Hey, everybody. Hey, Angie. Thank you for the mentee reminder. Uh, looks like we already have a bunch of questions. Uh, just want to check. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. So on the marketing side, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. One of the big projects we're doing is creating a new node hosting page, basically to help guide the community in creating, uh, creating nodes, but not in terms of setting up their own nodes, but in terms of having a hosting provider host a node for them. So we're really targeting those community members that would like a node, but that don't have the technical capacity to create their own. So I would consider myself one of those. So I'm very excited for this landing page myself. Um, we're also working with the design team on creating a holiday theme for the faucet. Uh, and one of the things I've been working on with Gustavo this week is the functionality to create uh, specific bonuses on specific days. So as I mentioned before, we'll definitely have a holiday bonus. I won't say exactly which day it will be going on. So you'll have to stay tuned onto our calls to learn that. But that functionality is being built now and will definitely be ready before the holidays. Um, also, one of the big things that we've been working on is forward looking into 2020. Uh, we had a really great brainstorming session. Um, and there is a lot of really interesting initiatives that we're planning to do in 2020 that are going to double, triple, quadruple the community size and really get a lot of great engagement. So uh, very you're excited under, about you're underselling that, Jonathan. I'm <laughs> telling you, you're going to 100x the community. Is my right. prediction uh, right? That's what Rob told me. Uh, 
maybe I don't want to get everyone's hopes too high up, but yeah, either way, the, the initiatives are, are really, really, really exciting. Uh, lastly, uh, for the tracking server, uh, we'll be working with Alan and Chronic on releasing a blog to the community. And lastly, lastly, uh, we're going to announce the winners of the node competition. Just wanted to uh, have a couple shout outs there. We had over 10,000 entries to the competition, which is 10x more than any other competition we've ever had. And we also wanted to give a shout out to Erica for doing such a great job of actually reaching out to the people who've won. It's a lot of people and it's a lot of emails and it's a lot of coordination, but we're very happy to do it. And Eric has been doing a really great job on that. So thank you. And that's it for me today. Thanks, Jonathan. Awesome update. Next one is Rosario with Product and Engineering. So, yes, I agree. Uh, amazing updates. Uh, I'm really uh, excited to hear about the videos going on Academy. I think that's going to going to help uh, boost uh, the educational uh, system and funneling people into our ecosystem. So that's uh, great to hear. So just a friendly reminder for everyone on the call. I know this is uh, public, but just uh, uh, update the your out of office, uh, the out of office calendar with any time that you have uh, that you're thinking about taking time off during the holidays and uh, work with your department head so that we have we can plan out and have continuous coverage uh, during the holiday season. Uh, I've been uh, taking some steps uh, uh, to have some of the uh, best practices that we've established with engineering onto the different teams. So I've been working with infrastructure and UX teams and uh, been uh, getting the help from Angie and Ruben. So I really appreciate you guys uh, uh, helping me with this effort. And, of course, the infrastructure and UX teams have welcomed us uh, into into their uh, different meetings and calls and pro processes. So shout out to them. And uh, I think now with the, the changes that we are, we've been implementing over the last few weeks, uh, we are very close to getting to the point where we can start prioritizing our activities uh, monthly, actually, uh, so that uh, we can uh, alleviate some of the resource contention that we've been seeing over, over the last uh, uh, couple months. Um, and also been working with the help desk team. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to start, as uh, Spencer said, uh, we're, there are going to be some changes to how the uh, data is presented, but would like to start uh, getting additional and more granular information that can help inform our different products. And that goes for Sphere, any of the wallets, or even the faucet. So that'd be uh, good information for us to digest. And in regards to Sphere, uh, we, we've been getting reports on performance issues that we are uh, investigating. So uh, we are going to be uh, conducting a, a in-depth review of, of Sphere and identifying that path to uh, fix those performance issues. But these are great, uh, great problems to have just because it just means that our wallets are being used by a significant amount of people and uh, we just have to make their experience a bit smoother. So uh, that's something that we'll be focusing on. And that's it for now. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add anything? Not today. Thank you. Thanks, Rolf. And now for the final part, Rob. Thanks, Angie. Uh, so, hello, everyone. I'm just getting back from a whirlwind roadshow. So, I've been to uh, New York City, where we had uh, Horizon Labs Grayscale Investor Dinner. We, we told you guys about that. Very successful event, oversubscribed. Um, everything's been going really well there. Uh, that went into, so the next thing from there was I went to Singapore and was able to get on stage uh, at the Coin Market Cap conference um, with uh, our partners at Flipside Crypto, which was excellent because what they did was they, they took time to go through their, um, their data platform, their, their dashboard, the metrics what it means for investors and how it can have an independent assessment of different cryptocurrency projects. 
And then they brought uh, me on stage um, to, to basically, as one of two projects that they highlighted as, okay, they, they've identified us as being one of the, the extremely high quality projects in the industry based on a bunch of unbiased uh, metrics that they, they uh, look across a, a whole cross section of projects in the industry. Um, so that was really, really nice to be able to go up there and, um, you know, uh, present uh, a little bit about our project and why we think that what we're doing supports the, the kind of quality metrics that are coming from Flipside Crypto. Uh, from there, uh, went to Miami uh, with Dean, and we had uh, just a series of different investor meetings. And uh, there'll be more information that we can release uh, as we formalize some agreements. But the good news is, so Horizon Labs has, uh, now has commitments for additional uh, additional investment. So we'll release some details when we actually uh, close on some of these agreements, but at least the commitments now are uh, what we're seeing. There, there's a uh, significant interest in investing in our ecosystem and Horizon Labs is one of the vehicles through which people are looking to invest. Uh, also, what we've been doing concurrent to uh, raising more capital for Horizon Labs to actually build out product teams, expand our engineering team and so forth. Uh, we're, we're actually also ra- raising awareness for uh, the ecosystem in general. Uh, we're getting some phenomenal feedback from everyone that we've been meeting so far. So just really good news. I wish I could uh, talk about more of the details there, but th- uh, that will be forthcoming. Now, internally, and this has been a little difficult for me being on the road, but we are having a bit of an ecosystem re- reorg or maybe realignment. Um, so the, the big picture thing here is I, I want to continue seeing our ecosystem grow in a very healthy, diversified way. And I don't want, for instance, Horizon Labs to be the only software company building in the ecosystem. I don't want, uh, you know, ZBF, the Zen Blockchain Foundation, to be the only, you know, nonprofit doing uh, community growth and, you know, uh, uh, awareness campaigns. So I, I want a broader ecosystem, a more robust ecosystem, uh, and one that's decentralized. So some things that we're doing. Um, so first of all, realigning what we have and what, what we've had so far is, we have companies like Horizon Labs doing a ton of work for the foundation. Uh, first things first is those people that have been doing significant work, a majority of their work for the foundation, will move over to the foundation. And the goal here is actually to have clear separation and, uh, and alignment of interest for foundation. Well, you know, like I've been saying so far, is a community startup. Uh, and Horizon itself, in my opinion, is, is a community startup. Um, we use technology heavily to bring our communities together, right, and to expand that. Now, Horizon Labs is a software startup, a, a technology startup. It's building very specific products that expand our ecosystem, but uh, its first uh, mission is technology in developing the technology. So separating the organization clearly is, is really important, and that's what we're doing right now. Um, we want them to be distinct, independent organizations, and then we have to rethink optimal org structures within them. And one example that I'm going to say here, so the I, I'm obsessed with the growth work that and Jonathan just allude, alluded to. Our growth numbers, since we've actually started to focus a little bit, just a tiny bit of attention on growth, have been staggering, like absolutely phenomenal, where our community is going exponential from just very limited campaigns without even dedicated resources. So what we're doing for 2020, and this is why I say Jonathan's significantly understated, uh, understating growth forecast, in my, my opinion. Um, I want to put together a dedicated growth team that is basically has resources, uh, fully contained resources, self-contained, so that the growth team can identify its own uh, priorities, have the resources to execute the priorities, and do so at such an intense level where we're going to be doing weekly sprints on projects. So identifying like this week, we're going to do this particular campaign. Now let's get to it. And then th- th- this team has all of the resources internally that it controls and prioritizes. And we go through an extremely rapid cycle of experiments. Um, and right now, I, I think what we've learned this year is we now know we have a pretty good idea of what types of things we need to do to incentivize or spark uh, massive growth. And now we just need to resource it and align the organization appropriately to really, uh, you know, hit on this and, and really press on it uh, significantly. So that's what we're going to do. Um, Lucy got me thinking uh, and, and actually completely convinced me on uh, putting together Horizon China and thinking about Horizon in China. So this is a massive market, and I'm not just talking about from just the the potential users in the market, but what I love about it is that the Chinese 
uh, market, the Chinese way of doing products, for instance, is something is completely different from, you know, say the way of doing product development in the US. The way that we, we like to use products, the user uh, characteristics, what we're looking for, how we engage with, with projects is just different. And what I want is more diversity. So uh, I'm very interested in exploring putting together a dedicated team for Horizon in China and have it be completely independent and you know, run specifically for the Chinese market. Now, of course, this is something that will require resources. So it's just something in the planning mode right now. But the moment that we have resources to do it, I want to move forward in this direction. It's something that I think would be really healthy for our ecosystem long term. Uh, and then the, the last piece of the, the ecosystem development here is we have independent software companies that are coming to the table and wanting to do work with us. Uh, and companies, uh, one, one company that I, I love in particular uh, it's called Deep Dive Technology. And we, we actually included, if you looked at our partners in our white paper, this they were included in there. But now they're just starting to get to work within the ecosystem. And we just had a, a fantastic meeting with them uh, to get their team uh, looking at, um, you know, Sphere. It's just one product. Just do a kind of an initial evaluation and low-hanging fruit for improvement on that. But we have other, like, deeper projects with Deep Dive um, that we're, we're looking to do. And what I want to do is keep them completely independent and just... You know, we need other organizations to come to the table and think about how they want to expand our ecosystem, improve our products, uh, you know, think about growth and, and all these things. Um, there's another company that I wish I could announce right now, another uh, technology company that uh, we're in discussions with. Uh, they're very interested in our sidechain technology and uh, coming in to expand that in, in some interesting ways. Uh, more in the near future on that. And then Rosario, so finally, just kind of walking through the closing up here, Rosario mentioned... Um, you know, uh, some work that we're doing on Sphere. And what what th this really sparked for me is we need to think through a product team in-house. Uh, we've been doing a lot of our product work outsourced, uh, which is fine. But um, I, I think we've built just such a, a you know, a deep engineering capability in-house that we need to start thinking about a uh, dedicated product team in-house, uh, working with, you know, other organizations, of course. Uh, but we need to cultivate this expertise and really have a, a focus on excellence in our products. So we're, you know, we're getting uh, you know reports of um, some you know growth issues with Sphere as the product. Um, you know, Jonathan showed me a, a chart internally uh, the other day. Uh, we, we need to clean up so that uh, we can well we'll we'll clean that up and show you guys. But basically, our Sphere downloads have gone exponential with our growth campaigns. Uh, and, it, and it's just going to get even more so. So as as we hit a million users in 2020, we're going to have Sphere used by a million people, a million plus people. We need to make sure that it is an excellent product and we don't have scaling issues like we are performance issues. So putting together this in-house product team is really important for me as well. So anyway, guys, that's what I have for you today. And as we formalize some more of these things, we'll get out details about what I've said. So any questions, we can open that up for Q&A. Sure. So, Rob, we're a little over time. Should it, we still go through the questions? We can yeah, do we'll maybe do one or two. Yeah, we'll do it quickly, please. Top two. Okay, great. The top question, I have some comments on this after you, but uh, as a community member, how can I help? Oh, man, that, that's an excellent one. So, actually, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on that. Okay, so my thoughts is, I think one of the greatest things you could do as a community member is share the faucet link. And this is why, first of all, everyone who refers someone through the faucet gets a bonus, which is awesome. But that's not why. Everyone who gets a little bit of Zen, even if it's through the faucet, based on the data we're seeing, is very likely to want to learn more about the project. So what we're seeing is that people who get, uh, you know, just a tiny bit of Zen are much more willing and interested in downloading wallets, learning about nodes, going to Academy. So if you're a community member who has someone who's interested in cryptocurrency, I think that's a phenomenal, easy, free way to get involved and also make a little bit of money. That's fantastic. I mean, I'll just keep it at that. So, I mean, really, we just need people to get involved. But, you know, sometimes having a, a small, tractable thing, uh, like refer people to the faucet is the best path. Love it. What's next? And, and it's win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the next question is, when can we see the extended model white paper? Oh, Alberto, do you want to field that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let's say that, uh, as I was saying before, currently we are uh, finishing the last part of the paper. Uh, so... Uh, 
it became quite huge. So um, it will have, a, let me say, uh, it will need an extensive review. And also because it's, let me say, it's going in, in, in details about what is going to be this extended model. But uh, so, I mean, this could take a little bit of time. But I would like to add one thing is that uh, we, are, we have already planned uh, the granular activities of, uh, in terms of development of the extended model. So this is probably even more, I mean, uh, let me say, not, not more, but interesting too. So just to say that we are even moving on with the development. That's what excites me, Alberto. <laughs> I would say that's, that's the interesting thing. It's nice to have a, a math model, but it's pretty cool to actually be able to build the technology. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's actually the next question is when can businesses use sidechains to build a solution? So. Alberto, I, I was just waiting for you to answer that one. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let, uh, first, uh, as we said, we are targeting beta as a first, uh, let me say, release that we can uh, use for uh, playing with the SDK uh, and uh, uh, writing your own application. So with the full, uh, let me say, flow, uh, I mean, forward transfer, backward transfer. So this will allow a developer to, let me say, have all the needed tools for uh, building the application. So, um, this uh, uh, will be initially uh, on testnet, and then after we will schedule the, the next phase for uh, for mainnet. But uh, also because uh, for sure we, we will need to have an assessment of the code. I mean, uh, uh, third party reviewing it from a security standpoint and so on. But uh, beyond that, uh, um, the the structure of the code and the SDK and what is going to be needed for developing uh, the, the sidechain application will be, uh, let me say, included in, uh, in. Awesome. No, thank you, Alberto. And thank you, Jonathan. Sure. That's all for me. Back to you, hey, Andrew. This is Rolf. I just I wanted to jump in on one, one quick thing here. Um, Rob, you talked about... Uh, you know, working on, on some of the things to make Sphere a really good product, and we're getting the, the faucet used a lot. I want, want to remind everybody that part of our philosophy is that we make these applications, and then we try to push them to their limits, get people using them a lot. And then when they get pushed to their limits, just like Zen uh, for so many different shielded transactions, for the node challenges, or so many people using Sphere, or lots of people using the faucet, when they get pushed to the limits, then we can know how we can improve them and fix them. So it's more how we respond to challenges and how we go about and continuously improve things as opposed to we can build beautiful software that works perfectly for the first time and, and, and that kind of stuff. So I, I see these issues that we're working through as a good thing. It means that we're getting people to use it and we're, we're pushing the limits of the system. And when more and more people uh, become part of the community and become users, we'll have all the, the software and systems in place to handle that, which puts us far ahead of any other project that builds what they think is a beautiful thing, but doesn't have people actually use it so they can't test it against the fabric of reality. So anyway. Very well stated, Ralph. Completely agree. Awesome. Well, Angie, back to you. Okay, uh, great session. We went a little bit over time, but I think it was worth it. So thank you all guys and girls for being here. Have a, an awesome day and night. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.